you have to say goodbye to this part of, of uh, my life that I will not come back anymore. The team, how they were um, waiting for me at the finish line was heartbreaking. Uh, and it continued actually also in the World Championships. People say thank you, thank you to me for just, I was just doing, chasing my goals. And that so many people enjoyed my style of racing and, and say that they will miss it. And that is super special for me to hear and also emotional. I can lead the sport proud. So thank you for all the people that say thank you, because it means a lot. I started racing in 2007 with some small quits and uh, as a stagiaire, I did the Holland Ladies Tour at that time in 2007 for the first time. Uh, only one day because I crashed already out after one day. <laughs> I was not so, my skills were not so good yet. Good to also end my career there. And it's also very close to my home. For my feeling I've had my name written all over the place uh, with a prologue near to my home. And also the last race is in my training area in Arnhem. Uh, and also really close where I grew up with my, uh, where my mother still lives in near in Vorder. So that feels like just uh, a nice way to say goodbye. And I was quite stressed in, in with training, I want to be the perfect athlete. When I was training with a power meter in 2010, 2011, I was super focused on that. So now I would more say to that girl, like, look a bit more around. Don't stress about your average power when you come back from a, from a training ride. I think my father always stimulated me to get the best out of myself. Also at school, I was already trying to get the highest grades, which I now also would advise to that girl. It doesn't matter if you have like maybe not the highest grades all the time. I realized that one of my strong points is that I don't get stuck in, in things I can't control and that I a lot of people I see a lot of people get stuck in that and that is so it's way better to, to focus on the things you have in control and that it makes you also more a happy person in general. Accept, adapt and move on. Whoa, this is really my sentence. I think I started to work with a mental coach since 2010. Um, and it was my driving force was just I want to get the best out of myself so also on mental part I had to deal with a lot of negative thoughts at that time I was not a climber and as soon as the climb was popping up I was like oh here I go again I will drop I'm too heavy you first need to have an issue before you need to uh, before you want to start to work with a mental coach and I hope he really uh, can change this uh, thing in, in, in cycling, but also in sport in general. That is just, mental coaching is just such an important part of getting the best out of yourself as an athlete. Just doing, getting like information about the course and no team goal, no goal of the day, no goal of the stage, do you want to win? <laughs> it was just information about the course. And I'm really proud if I see the journey we took as a team for Movistar, where we came from. I'm sometimes still a bit laughing how, I, how we did the first races and how unexperienced our team was and how super, super experienced they, were, they are now. And especially in uh, the biggest thing they developed is, I think, uh, to defend uh, a GC. Like, that's like nothing now to say anymore. Like, everyone knows and that's the biggest uh, Thing, but it's not only the riders also the staff they had to deal with me with a lot of more pressure yeah i think for that was a demonstration for sure that we we race as a team really strong there for me it was a really good example where um you can win as a team and um, the vuelta that was teamwork but also still with room for some jokes and it's still the family where i signed up because that's why what i felt to sign with Movistar, I felt like it's a professional team, but also still with yeah, a bit of relaxedness and, and fun. I think there's more talent in this team than the riders are aware of. Sometimes it starts really to believe in yourself as a rider to get the best out of yourself. Number one. Yeah, it's hard to choose between Bolongong and Yorkshire because they're so different. I'm really proud of Yorkshire, how I prepared and was so, so gutsy to attack with 105 km ago, it was quite epic. In, in, and in Volongo, it says a lot about my character, is with accepting that you have a broken uh, elbow, try to make, make the best out of it. The rewatching, it's uh, like the last kilometer of Volongo that gives me still goosebumps. I, I can feel really the emotions of that whole week of disappointment and 
it's maybe a whole my career summarized in one week. It came there all together. In to the fans, it's, it's above the Olympics because it had a huge impact. It was when I came home, it was exceeding my expectation. How many people enjoyed that race, uh, followed that race, uh, how many impact it had to win the Tour de France and how big the Tour de France was, Bergen, because that was a turnaround in my career. That was the first time where I did win something big. After the Rio Olympics, where I misjudged that corner, but also the year after, I was really close to win the Giro d'Italia and I was sleeping when we had a echelon stage. Also, I had my mother there at the finish line. It was a really nice moment. I, I want to add more to the list. 18 La Course Battle with Anna and me. Like, yeah, because that was such a huge entertainment for people to watch and so exciting race. And then those two to the planners, which one do you prefer? Uh, the one in Mostar. When I saw all the happy faces, all the, the team I remember was waiting for me. I could feel um, I did something really nice there with my team. I, I try also not to sign a contract in 2024 to have it really like a sabbatical and an, a year of where I can say yes to some shorter projects and to orientate a bit, uh, to find yeah, a new project where I want to, be, to develop new qualities. Um, but I signed up for a course of the Olympic Committee for athletes that, will, that, are, that stop, like me, uh, with eight together and it's like a, yeah, a short course of eight uh, things where you, where they try to challenge you to think a bit about like, hey, what did I actually learn in my career? What qualities do I have and what would I like to develop even more in, in yeah, the next part of my career? I will really enjoy that. I don't need to go out training when it's raining in the Netherlands and when it's cold and when it's shitty weather. I have a bit more freedom. I, am, I was married with a bike, so I can now go, I have more freedom to go wherever I want, not having the anxiety of losing your form and your shape. So um, having a bit more social life without a bike. But the good thing is that my life didn't stop as a professional athlete. I was still quite good to combine my social life with my, with my bike. I hope also other athletes like can approach it like that. That it's it's not only the bike you can combine it with social activities. I think the biggest compliment that people can give me that I inspire them with some of my wins. That they that they find the, uh, the ways to find energy again to to look forward and to set my goals positive and don't get stuck in negativity. I'm super proud that I was part of this journey and yeah, in the most beautiful way of ending my career.